A beautiful Friday afternoon here in Clemson, South Carolina. Welcome in to pristine Clemson Softball Stadium. Getting things going with a little Big Ten ACC Challenge action as the Tigers host the Maryland Terrapins here this afternoon. Well, alongside Scott Whitlock, I'm William Quackamish. Thanks so much for joining us today. Four teams, two leagues, outstanding. What more could you ask on a day like this for college softball? At different sites across the country today, the ACC and the Big Ten are matching up. Second week of the season. Want to see who's doing what right now, who's feeling good, who's got to get better. It's going to be a lot of fun. But the biggest thing is it is fantastic to be having this right here in Clemson, South Carolina. That's right. The Tigers coming off their first home win against Western Carolina on Wednesday. They're putting Valerie Cagle in the circle today. A lot expected from her this afternoon. Yeah, she's a walking Swiss Army knife. I mean, she hits, she, she pitches, she plays center field. I mean, she can do it all. And right now, she's going to pitch for the Tigers. 5'9 freshman out of Yorktown, Virginia. And on the other side, Maryland. They're coming off their first win of the season with a first-year coach looking pretty good. Yep, Mark Montgomery's a new head coach at Maryland. He's trying to set up a, a culture, start a new tradition, a way of doing things there. They played an exceptionally difficult schedule uh, to start the season. Don't let that one and four record fool you. And you see there a couple of lefties to start out, four right-handers and three lefties down at the bottom. And the Tigers just about set to get underway, wearing the all-orange. They sold out both games here on Wednesday as they christen this brand-new stadium. And in the All Blacks, Maryland going to start things off here in the top of the first. It's Regan Kerr, sophomore, 4 for 12 here in the early going this season. Cagle's first pitch of the afternoon. A little bit low, ball one. Kerr is hitting 333 early on in the season. She started and played in all five games so far for the Terps. It's a team a lot of balance through the classes. They start with a sophomore, but two seniors, four juniors in that starting lineup, and there's a strike on the outer edge, one and one. It's important that Cagle hit the zones and stay ahead in the count. You get in trouble when you get behind, and I know that the, uh, pitches, the pitching coach there at uh, Clemson is really, really emphasizing throw strikes. Creeping in, expecting something, the third baseman, and the pitch misses down and away. Clemson has the, uh, the luxury of having a former head coach as their pitching coach. Kyle Jamison, uh, well-respected in our business, uh, does a great job, and I know he's excited about working with Cagle. Both of these staffs really full of head coaches. Yes, they are. Sides. Three balls and a strike now. The count to Kerr. Amanda Brashear on deck. Anna Kufta will follow for the Terrapins here as we're just underway in Clemson Softball Stadium this afternoon. Good crowd joining us, and they watch a foul ball back to the netting, three and two. And this is a beautiful facility. It is just remarkable. They've done a great job with it. In about three years, they put it up. And construction, of course, took less time than that. But about three years ago, when Athletic Director Dan Radakovich said Clemson going to have softball and in that time they have done just a pristine job to set the stage for this program and now a foul ball slap to the third base dugout as Kerr doing a good job doing a leadoff hitter supposed to do Scott and that stay alive trying to just find some way to get on base just get on there somehow I don't want to guess too much too early but you may see Cagle try to go up in the zone this time and try to sneak one by her Tried to go away and Keep just away. missed. So a leadoff walk drawn by the Terrapins as Kerr gets on first with nobody out. And that right there is what you don't want to do. Leadoff walks often score. They're very, very uh, magical and, myst and mysterious about that. But somehow they just find a way to get around the base path. You see Amanda Brashear, an RBI, early going of the season, center fielder. Kerr three for three in stolen bases already this year. You got to watch her running the bases and pitch missed a little bit. Ball one as Cagle gets behind again. Yep, she's missing just off the plate to the right side. But right now, they, uh, as the game goes along, she'll tighten it up, the umpire loosen it up, and she'll find a happy spot. 
Runner going, the throw down goes into center field, and so we'll give Kerr a stolen base. Four for four now on the season. The sophomore from Phoenix in scoring position with nobody out. She got a good job, but she runs very well. The throw was high. Brashear watching a strike there, showing the slap. See if Maryland can execute here. 1-1. One, one. Slap foul. Now Cagle's ahead of ball and two strikes. Yeah, this, uh, this Maryland team has got, got some experience. Uh, obviously, they're in transition, just like uh, a lot of teams around the country with new coaches uh, on board. But uh, they've got veteran players. And uh, if you make mistakes against veteran players, they hurt you. Pop up. Chasing and can't track it down. The center fielder, Leo Galeo, lets it fall in front of her, and that's a little CNI single there. Two on, nobody out as Brashear gets aboard. You'll see a little, just a Texas leaguer right there, and it just falls in that, in that triangle that, between the left and center fielder and the shortstop. Now they've got runners on first and second. Nobody out in the middle of the batting order coming up. Anna Kufta. Right hand batter. Swing and a miss. Can it flew that one by her. 0 and 1. It's really odd right here because, you know, you're thinking you got your first two runners on. Are you going to bunt the ball? In today's game, you're not going to do that. You're usually going to let your three, four, and five hitters drive the ball. See what you can do. And she certainly didn't show any signs of bunting on that pitch. They're swinging a miss. There you go. She, Kegel looked a lot more confident releasing those pitches right there. Sometimes a pitcher, you know, you have to have a have a ball put in play on her, have a couple of things, and it'll settle her down. Tough to a junior out of Huntington Beach, California. Rather a senior, four-year starter. Pitch missed a little bit low to her, one and two. California is a hotbed for softball recruiting. Uh, years ago, it was the place to go. Now it's one of the places to go as softball has moved both east and south. And uh, now this area of the country is becoming a place where everybody comes to look for players. A shot up in the air, and that'll go foul into the bullpen. Tough to through the coaching change has maintained her starting role. She has started now all 164 games that she's played in in her Terrapins career. That's steady work. First and second, nobody out early on. Lead off walk, stolen base, bloop single for the Terps. And here's Cagle's pitch, fouled back. Still one and two to Kufta, who's continuing to battle here against Cagle. With all three hitters, Cagle has just not been able to manage to get that out pitch by him. Uh, she gets, she's doing a very good job with the count, but the, give Maryland credit, they're fouling balls off and they're fighting things off and they're finding you know, ways to extend the at bat. Rounder to third, right off the bag. And nothing anybody can do about that. So the Terrapins load them up with nobody out. And a little bit of a tough break for Clemson, a good break for the Terrapins here early on as they try to strike first on the road. Take another look at this. You see that ball just skirted under, under the glove of the third baseman, Stewart, and hit the bag, and that prevented a run from scoring. So it was bad luck, good luck. Now the base is loaded. First pitch strike, a high strike call. As Taylor Ligori, freshman batting 333, a couple of runs driven in already this season for the Terps, stands in. This is not what you want. You don't want the cleanup hitter at the plate with the bases full. Miss low there. Ligori out of Columbia, Maryland. One of several Maryland natives that have been contributors for this Terrapins team. Four hits and 12 at-bats down in the Texas Classic. We talked about a tough start to the season for the Terps down there. Yeah, they uh, 
they got fire tested early. I think they uh, they saw the University of Texas. They saw uh, Wichita State, I believe. Um, and they, so they they saw some some quality softball programs. One two from Cagle downstairs. Count evens two and two. The Rouse scored 25 nothing in the first two on back on February 6, eight days ago by Wichita State and Texas. And Colorado State Lamar, they lost those and then beat Texas A&M Corpus Christi back on the 8th of February on Saturday. Grounder to second, could be two for the Tigers, and it is. Great job that time by the Clemson infield. Ball was kind of hit sharply right at Perea. And she was able to turn the double play. You'll see right here. Does a great job. Nice backhand feed to the shortstop, Goodwin. And on over to first. A good play there by the Tigers infield. And well, we got a mound visit here. We can tell you, you know, we talked to John Rittman before the game, and you asked him specifically, who are the leaders on this team? And the first name he said was Camperera. That's right. And uh, she's a, a transfer in here, a veteran. Uh, and uh, that's very important because this Clemson ball club is very, very, very short on experience. You got 12 freshmen and then some junior and senior transfers that have filled out the roster. Waited a long time to get on the field wearing the orange jerseys you see him in today. Pereira transferred from Furman University, not too far from Clemson. Now runner on third and two outs for Maryland. They did get the run there and take the early lead. Gracie Vulgaris, 273 batter, three for 11. Good off speed pitch for a strike. I'll tell you, if Cagle can establish that changeup, that's going to make her a very, very dangerous pitcher. That is the, the most underrated pitch in this game, and it is a great pitch. Right in there, a strike. There you go. One and two. And, I, and you got it. You got to know this if you're uh, Cagle. If you somehow are able to get Volgaris out. You've done a great job of damage control of getting out with only one run given up on a nobody out bases loaded jam. And there it is, strike three. Elevated and got the K. And now the Tigers will bat. Maryland strikes first, a one nothing lead for the Terps here in Clemson. Maryland with the early run, taking a lead over the Clemson Tigers, a home standing team in orange headed to the mound. They're going to face an imposing presence here in the circle. Courtney Weiss, a freshman out of Maryland, and she has got a bright future ahead of her. She does. They, the coaches like her. She's a local product. Uh, and they, what they do this year is going to have a lot to do with what kind of season that Miss Weiss has. Right-hander, two starts already in the circle. Seven and a third innings under her belt. She'll face this Clemson lineup very right-handed. See at the top, Pereira, we talked about her already. Cagle, you mentioned a Swiss Army knife, I think, with Valerie Cagle. She's batting third in the order, and she can flat-out swing it. She's not just a pitcher at all. Right. Oh, she's a very, very uh, skilled player. Now Cami Pereira. 292 batter, seven starts already for the Tigers. A couple of runs batted in. She takes one outside, ball one. She's hitting 292, but she, she does have an on-base percentage of 346 and hitting the leadoff spot. That's what it's all about, finding ways to get on base. Tried to slap there and tipped it into the mitt. One and one, the count to her. Good crowd developing out here in Clemson today. Yes, there is. Busy, busy weekend on campus. People are excited about softball coming to Clemson. I mean, it is something else. 
We mentioned on Wednesday, they had a sellout at 2.30 in the afternoon and a sellout at 5 for the first two home games. They had to wait till the second game, the home fans did, to see a run scored by the home team. But it was certainly a sight to behold here, as I know a lot of folks waited for a long time to get that moment. Yep, it was so a foul back by Pereira. There's a lot of people that have wanted this uh, to occur for a long time. And uh, I think that uh, in, in years to come, people are going to see something very, very special and unique happen here with softball. Uh, they've done the facilities just in a first-class way. They went out and hired themselves a, just a fantastic coach. And, uh, and it'll just, it, you know, it, this year's going to be unique in terms of the ups and downs, but all of the, the right components are in place for this place to be very special for softball. White's a deep breath on the mound. Swing and a miss. She got Pereira fooled there and a good start for Courtney White in the circle. It was. She didn't do anything very complicated. She just worked away, away, away. As you can see right there. There's a look at first year head coach John Rittman. Now you've known him for a long time. Long time. And I'm going to tell you, he's one of life's great people. He was an excellent softball coach. And uh, I'm just uh, really excited about the fact that he's here in the upstate and going to bring softball to life here at Clemson. I at Stanford, he did nothing but go to the postseason. That's Every all he does single is win. Year. All he does is win. I had the privilege of uh, being in the United States national team coaching pool with John for many years. And uh, we literally have been around the world together. And he's an outstanding teacher of the game and a, just a quality person. Speaking of outstanding, left fielder Grace Mattimore, five runs batted in. Already this season, a 308 average. She's got a couple of doubles. Off to a good start there. She took a hack at one and fouled it back. Yep, good healthy swing. Matamore, a mid-year transfer from West Point. Came into the program and joining in January, already on the field for some big moments here early in the season for the Tigers. Takes one away there. You don't often see a transfer in from West Point. I hope she's not AWOL. <laughs> I think they probably let her out. They probably did. I think so. Okay. <laughs> she's ahead in the count here. Two balls and a strike. Native of Ashburn, Virginia. 2-1 to her. Fouled straight back. You already see, you already see that uh, White is attacking the strike zone. She's throwing a lot of balls near the plate, and, that, and that's the name of this game is uh, throwing strikes. And that may be what's going on out there at the mound right now. Pitching coach took a quick jog out there to uh, to maybe talk about uh, the fact that you may want to. Work away when you get get up in the count or whatever. I don't know that's uh, Mike Forsyth or Forsyth. He was with Coach Mark Montgomery down at Louisiana Tech, and he came up to, to uh, Maryland late in the fall. Anyway, you talk about a climber, Mark Montgomery, a winner everywhere he's been. He's built programs from the dust. Pitch misses away there. It's three and two. Georgetown, Kentucky, Centenary, couple of years at Northern Colorado, and then seven strong years at Louisiana Tech. They won 45 games a year ago. This is an excellent coach. I mean, Mark Montgomery knows what he's doing. 556 career wins, and now trying to resurrect a Maryland program that hadn't been in the postseason in eight years. And there's a swing and a miss as White sits down Matamore for the second out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for the freshman. Got the up pitch by her, just threw it right by her. How about that fist pump, too? She knows how big a game this is, yep. playing in front of a lot of fans and getting off to a good start, so important. She's a little juiced out there right now. You better believe it, and you love to see that as a coach. You want the, you want the players to be in the moment. Valerie Cagle, look out there, up and in. That was up and in. 
We'll see what she can do at the play. We saw her pitch. Here's the last game against Western Carolina. She's able to drive in a big run for the Tigers, and then she goes long ball, big fly out to left center field. A lot of pop in that bat. What you, what you don't want to do right now if you're white is get too confident and serve something up that, that Cagle could drive out of here because, as you said, she does have two home runs on the year. She can drive the ball right out of this park. Cagle, freshman from Yorktown, Virginia. Big cut and a miss on a 2-0. White's with some good stuff early. Now having a battle back from behind in the count against Cagle. One unique thing about Cagle, too, homeschool. Yeah. Sometimes it's tough to find those, but John Rittman's got him a find indeed in Cagle as she's now even the count. White has two and two. Well, in, in club softball, there's so much uh, travel ball that is evaluated during the summer and in the late spring. A homeschooled kid has got a great chance to still be seen. Here's a 2-2. Fouls it away. And you see White really getting up there in the radar gun from 71. That pitch was 72 miles an hour. Now, you throw 72 miles an hour in fast pitch softball, that is roughly the equivalence of about 98 or 99 miles an hour in baseball. That's giddy up. It's tough to hit, and in softball, they can do it a lot more times than a guy can in baseball. And then she goes off speed and strikes out the side in the first. One heck of a start for Courtney White as she keeps the Tigers off the board. Kegel is swinging a miss there. We'll see her in the circle when we return to Clemson in just a moment. Well, a beautiful day just to be outside here in Clemson, South Carolina. A lot of folks have made their way over to Clemson Softball Stadium. Crowd continuing to mill around and find their seats. And so far, they've seen the Maryland Terrapins get out to a 1-0 lead. And now the Terps with... Six, seven, and eight in the order due to bat against Valerie Cagle here in the top of the second inning. They'll start with Shelby Yunkin. One for six on the year, getting the start today. Yeah, she's appeared in four games, but only started one. She, uh, like you said, she's one for six. She, it was a double, though. At least the one hit she had was quality. That's right. You see her numbers, a couple of runs batted in. A little bit up and away for Cagle, 2-0. You know, that comeback shot saw, showed a wonderful scene of, it looked like predominantly students sitting and standing out there in the uh, grass area beyond the left field wall. Uh, they got a little bit of a knoll here, and it's, I mean, it's a great, great look. There's a base hit to right field. Good piece of hitting there by Yunkin going the other way. And again, the leadoff hitter aboard for the Terps in the second. And she kept it simple. She just went with the pitch. Says, you're going to throw it out there, then I'll hit it over there. And that's exactly what she did. Shoots it right through the hole. And now with a runner at first, nobody out. It'll be the number seven hitter, Taylor Wilson. Still very early in the year, so the batting averages are a little bit deceiving. But uh, Wilson's only one for seven on the year. You can tell with this Maryland team, you know, Clemson, a, a new program, you maybe got limited options to choose from. You give the Terrapins a lot of credit. They have rolled out some different lineups, and yep. they've tried to mix and match and try to figure out what works here early on, not afraid to make some stark changes from game to game. Well, They've got experience on that ball club. They've got depth on that ball club. Ground ball to first. Only play will be to first. They had a little hit and run going right there. And uh, 
The, the only play, the only play to make was at first base. Bonamé did a really good job of not throwing the ball to second base. Sometimes the best thing to do is not throw. Again, the Terrapins with good base running. They stole second back in the first. That time the hit and run got the leadoff runner over, and now Youngkins at second with one out. And another left-hand batter. It's Klein Campbell, the right fielder. Cagle misses in, ball one. Line a 182 batter. High bouncer over third, and a good play there on the backhand by Goodwin to keep the ball in the infield. Probably saved a run there for Clemson, but the Terrapins, on the other hand, back in business now with two on and one out, and another run 90 feet away. Well, you'll see this infield is firmed up nicely, and the ball takes a huge hop. The third baseman had no chance at the play. And, but the wonderful job by the shortstop, Goodwin, just to keep the ball in the infield and at least for the time being, preventing a run. Let's see what JoJo McCray can do. Hitless and eight at-bats thus far. A couple of walks. Runner going to second to throw down. They're going to try to get her at home, and they do. Great play that time by the Clemson defense. They had the right defense called, and they were able to mow the runner down at the plate. This all starts with an excellent throw by the catcher. If she doesn't make that throw, the, the infielder's not gonna be able to handle the ball cleanly and get the ball back to her. You see the sweep tag, outstanding job. And JoJo Hyatt started that exchange with a good throw, as you said, and. Hannah Goodwin able to return the favor and a good tag. And if, See, that was not automatic out right. at the plate if you don't get the good uh, tag on. No, and, if, and again, it all starts with JoJo making an outstanding throw uh, that was easily handled by the shortstop where she could get the ball right back to her. All they did there was play the simple game of catch, and they got an out. Two and one to count now as that pitch misses from Cagle. I think she wanted that call a little bit. Not as, not as important right now as it might be. You've got a base open. There, the leadoff hitter, Kerr, is up there. She's got room to work with. Little bloop, and let's see. They're going to try to score the runner. Throw to the plate. Not in time. And oh, let's see the call. They're they, going to call they, interference. They're calling obstruction on the base runner. The base runner made contact with the shortstop. You can't do that. So that ends the inning right there. So really a tough break for the Terps says Mark Montgomery didn't like it. And there you see one of the big outs of the inning. Tigers get one at home and they'll bat in the bottom of two. Well, a couple opportunities for Maryland to score in the top of the second. One was cut down on a double steal. The Tigers erased at the plate. And the other was erased on a runner's interference play, an obstruction call that probably was correct, but Mark Montgomery, the Maryland coach, not really liking it out there on the field between innings. He's still very, very upset about the call, but I think it might have been the right call. I don't know if you've got a shot of it or not, but it was, uh, if you watch right here, okay. The runner made contact. With the out, with the with the fielder, while she was still trying to cleanly field the ball, she had not bobbled, did not been an error. Therefore, obstruction was called, and that was the final out of the inning, and it got the Tigers out of a jam. And we'll see if Clemson could parlay that into a good offensive inning. As Courtney White's back out in the circle, she struck out the side in the first, and now she's got to face M.K. Bonamy. She's had an outstanding start to her Clemson career. Yes, she has. And the Tigers need to have a little bit better at bats, put the ball in play, make the defense work. If you're sitting up there and you're swinging at pitches and not making contact, you certainly are making life easy for your opponent. But everybody just got to give this young team time. 
Clemson's second win was down in Orlando against St. John's. They scored 15 unanswered runs in that game. Four of them came on a Bonamy Grand Slam, first in program history. Yeah, that was quite a seventh inning. It, it just went on forever and ever and ever. <laughs> I'm sure it was longer for the St. John's coaching staff, too. Yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> Three and zero. Oh. See if White can find the zone, and she can't. So how about that? Going from striking out the side to a four-pitch free pass issued to Bonamy here in the bottom of the second. And what did I tell you in the very first inning about leadoff walks? We saw it in the first. We'll see what happens here in the bottom of the second. But they just find a way to score, and that time uh, White just was nowhere near the zone. I mean, she missed clearly on four straight pitches and uh, now her medal will be tested and Marissa Gambarda transfer from Furman native of Sewanee Georgia three for 19 her stance spans the width of the batter's box as she takes ball one high and White just trying to find it again right now I drove by Swanee coming up the road today. How about that? Yeah. That's a good piece of countryside, isn't it? You better believe that's over in Gwinnett County. I noticed that the Tigers roster has several Georgians in it. Snap throw back to first, and easily back there is Bonamy. That aggressive lead. See the snap throw by the catcher. Nice job. Nice job of getting back. Deep breath from White. Missed outside. She's nibbling a lot this inning, and she may have been nibbling a lot in the first inning, and the Clemson hitters were chasing it. But they're much more disciplined this second time around and uh, making her work, and she's getting behind. Two and one. Found the inside corner there. Good spot. Two and two. Uh, this is the pitch. If you're white, you want to make it happen right here. And if you're the hitter, you want to be ready to go because this should be somewhere near the plate. Like a screwball there from white. Two, two. Gabarda couldn't hold back. Got a quite enough, but did get a piece. Got just a piece of it. I mean, that that all that did was touch the paint on the bat. Clemson still in search of its first hit this afternoon. Trailing a run here in the bottom of the second. Gambardo waits a 2-2 from White. Here it comes. Way up and away. Yep. And I want the fans at home to know that when you see White looking down at her at her glove, she's not looking at a wristwatch. The, they have a system in place now where they call pitches from the dugout. And so after the pitch is called, she looks at her, her wristband and finds out what pitch has been asked for. See what they do with Bonamy on a 3-2 here. Bouncer. Good scoop and throw there by Kufta at third base. Yep. That'll advance a base runner, but it's also the first down of the inning. Good job by Whites to battle back. And she also, she got the out, but to the credit of Gombarda, she moved the runner. I mean, it, it's going to go as a, a, a put out, but it's just almost like a sacrifice bunt. Clipson wants to score runs. And the way you can run, score runs is you move the base runners around. And that was a productive out. Right-hand batter, Hannah Goodwin. 300 average already, and she takes wide, ball one. This will be Clemson's first at bat with runners in scoring position. Maryland already with three hits with runners in scoring position today. Only one run to show for it. Yeah. 
Looper to right. That'll fall in. Again, a whole bow. She ran through the stop sign. She's caught, and she gets back to third in time. <laughs> well, John Rittman laid on the brakes four. May have laid on the horn a little bit there. Yeah, to make a stop. yeah. that was a whoa. <laughs> he had his hands out. I think he'd have tackled her if he, she'd have kept running. <laughs> Good swing from Goodwin. They're very high yeah. on her. Talked a little bit about yep. her with the coaching staff earlier. Goodwin found a little real estate there in right, and now runners on the corners with one out. As you see here, the stop sign being thrown on hard by Coach Rittman out in the third base coaching box. Good job of base running. And now the Tigers have got runners on the corner. Look how the world's changed. Weich was just in complete control in the first inning. And now you, you get a base runner on, things tighten up. This happens, that happens, and the next thing you know, the, the Tigers are right here threatening. Now Bailey Taylor, another transfer, is a strike on the outside edge. Native of Winsboro, South Carolina, started her career at Troy and then transferred back into the Palmetto State. She's a DP for the Tigers today. White's another deep breath on the mound. Pitch high, one and one. I wonder right now if you're going to see the uh, Tigers put runners in motion right now to try to uh, create something. We saw the, uh, the Terrapins try to do that and, and got cut down at the plate. Goodwin did a good job of bluffing that time over at first base. Bonami can run the bases at third. That ball popped up foul back out of play. She's somebody you could try a gadget play like that with. The one thing that if you talk to Johnny Rittman about this ball club, the one thing that he wishes they had was a little bit more team speed. And uh, he knows he's got good athletes. He's got good softball players. But he wishes he had a little more speed. That comes with time. One, two. Strike three called. And I believe it was. I believe that was a very good pitch that time by White. I think you're going to see it caught her looking cold on the outside corner. Pumped up again. White's not afraid to show some emotion in the circle. And now time's called. We got a meeting of the minds everywhere now for Maryland. Got several people meeting yes, us there we do. right now. Goodness. Here's Mark Montgomery. I've seen the pitcher, I've seen the pitching coach go out and talk to the pitcher a million times, but I've never seen the, the coach go out and talk to everybody but the pitcher. <laughs> And that's what we just witnessed. You know, I got to say, just reading body language, I think Mark Montgomery was expecting conversation B to last a little bit longer. Yeah. He's telling her that right yeah. now. Yes, he, he said, is. He said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stretch it out. Stretch it out a little bit. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that was we wanted a better second conversation or I'm supposed to have that conversation. I think what that was was she went out to to talk to the pitcher, but he was setting his defense in this first and third two-out situation. They went out there, you know, with two outs, it's a little bit different with a runner on third base. Sometimes you just throw straight through and hope to get the runner before the third runner at third base comes across the plate. So he was setting the defense, but he just wishes that the pitch, that the, uh, <laughs> that the visit on the mound would have taken a little longer. Aliyah Logaleo, freshman from Nashville, up at the plate. Takes ball one there. Counts even a ball and a strike. Runners on the corners, two outs. Clemson looks to square this score. one nothing. Maryland leads here in the bottom of the second inning. Big deep breath by White's that time. She hit her spot on the inside corner. Tell you what, if she could make that pitch right there every time. She can take big, deep breaths as long as she wants to, but that was a great pitch on the inside part of the plate. 
She's got good tailing action back toward the right-hand batters. She is one pitch of getting out of a huge jam. Swing and a miss, gets past the catcher, and everybody's going to hang on. Wow. There's a big one. The catcher opted not to throw the ball down to first base. Held on to the ball, and that's going to give the Tigers another life. Yeah, Gracie Bulgaris, a sophomore right there, could have gotten the out at first. Instead, she thought about trying to get the out at the plate, and Bonamy really didn't move all that far down the third base line. And so a oh. bit of a mental error there for Maryland with two outs. Yeah. I now the bases are loaded. I think the catcher was more afraid of the run across the plate before the out was established at first base. But uh, anyway, it worked out for Clemson as they're going to get another opportunity. And JoJo Hyde's going to step in. Base is loaded, and there's a strike. On the outside corner, Hyatt, another freshman, one of four freshmen in the lineup for the Tigers today. Two hits and 12 at-bats thus far. A couple of runs batted in as well. She's got the program's first triple. Which misses away. Our producer, Sandra Sullivan, just mentioned a triple would be handy right here. Yes, it would. There's no way not to clear the bases with a triple. Master of the obvious. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a fun day for Sanders. we got five more innings to go. <laughs> White again, that deep breath. Freshman deals. Check swing, and she held back. Two and one. They are going to check it, and Phil Friel's out at first base says no go. I don't think she went. We'll check the replay here. That's a good call. Uh, yes, it was. This is a big pitch in the ball game for the rookie Whites on the mound for the Terrapins. She hit that corner again. That might have been a little generous, but I uh, I think it's been a pretty consistent call. First time through the order, Clemson batters. That's a pretty good pitch. You got to establish a strike zone one way or the other, and that has been consistently called a strike thus far, no doubt. You are correct. That one missed by just a hair, and the count's full. And now he got a really big pitch in the ball game in a one-run game so far here in the second with the bases loaded and a 3-2 count. Yeah, right now it's, uh, it's, right, it's right in front of you. And you got the nine hitter at the plate, too, if you're Maryland. The last thing you want to do is put her on for free. Big pitch from White. Foul. Good job of fighting that pitch off that time by JoJo Hyatt. Hyatt, a redshirt freshman from Buford, Georgia. Already responsible for one run in a manner of speaking for her team as she saved one as a catcher, putting a tag on the base runner on a double steal back in the last half inning. Can she be responsible offensively for one? Little looper, tough play. Good hustle and stick to it in this by White. And she gets the out and ends the inning. Clemson off the scoreboard. Maryland coming to bat next. Right back here in Clemson, another threat for the Tigers. The Terrapins had one, went scoreless. Clemson the same way. In the bottom of the second inning, some good pitching and good defense by Courtney Weiss there. And now the Terrapins back at it with the top of their batting order. Kerr, Brashear, and Kufta. Yeah, we saw both teams squander scoring opportunities in the second inning. And uh, it's going to be really, really important now 
for for Cagle to settle in. If you watch this last sequence, the end of the inning, ball spins off the bat. The pitcher, Watch, does a great job of getting to it and underhanding it to the first baseman to retire the side. She got herself in trouble and then worked herself out of it. You can see with that deep breath, she closed her eyes. Big moment for the freshman. And she's able to deliver a couple of strong innings for White so far. Now you see her counterpart, Valerie Cagle. Making her fifth start, she's completed two games so far for Clemson. Misses away, two and one to count. Right now, it's about Cagle getting consistent with her with her pitches and giving the defense a chance to help her, as she did right there. Nice job, big one, big one hopper to the to the third baseman, and Taylor takes takes care of it, just like that. A good job there. First out of the inning, Bailey Taylor able to gobble it up. A lot of people forget sometimes that at bats are not about three strikes. They're about one out if you're a pitcher. Get me a ground ball any day. One pitch out is a lot prettier to a head coach than, than a three two count strike three. You know, pitch efficiency is really important in baseball and softball. In softball, we talk about all the time, one of the differences in the game is the pitchers can go forever. I mean, they can just keep on throwing. Right. But you don't want them to keep throwing just because they can. You're good oh. with efficient innings and quick innings to get them in and out so you keep everybody on their toes and everybody fresh. I'd be perfectly pleased with a 21-pitch game. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. Give me three first-pitch <laughs> ground outs to second. I'll be happy. Amanda Brashear trying to avoid that as she's ahead in the count two and one against Cagle. Brashear hitting only 154 on the year. But there again, the batting averages are a little bit skewed right now because it's so early in the season. Put a good rip on that one and fouled it yep. down toward third into that left field corner. Two balls, two strikes to count now. I'll tell you, with all the, the rain that we've had recently in this part of the country, the, the field just looked immaculate. I can tell you, they did a lot of work on the field on Wednesday. That home opener was a big deal. They sold it out. They were packing people in here. There you see Cagle swinging a miss, and she retires Brashear for the second out of the inning or second strikeout. Yep, you watch right here. You're going to see her take just a little bit off of that. Had to hit her way out in front of her. And now Cuff is going to come up, and she's got to try to get something started with two outs. Cuff to one of the four hits for Maryland so far. She singled back in the first inning. Here's a strike. And she did a good job of hitting. She went with the pitch, if you recall, and served that thing up out in the right field. Kufta, we talked about, California native. A lot of good softball being played out there. She whacks that one right back to the netting, and it's 0-2. It's amazing how many players uh, from the West Coast come east to play. You know, they, they're they from a recruiting hotbed, but they want to come play for these famous schools and the big conferences all over the country. And it's just, uh, it's amazing. A tad away there, a little bit low for Cagle perhaps, one and two. Crowd getting behind her a little bit here in Clemson on a beautiful Friday afternoon. They're trying to urge Cagle on to get that strike out. And we tried that change up again and missed high. Almost pulled the string on Kufta. But you know what? All you got to do is show that every once in a while, and it'll help unnerve the batter because that pitch right there will make the next firm pitch look like 10 degree, I mean 10 miles an hour faster than it really is. Good call, 
Foul ball there right into that first base dugout. Karam's off the wall. Still two and two. White's had a little easier job throwing strike three today. Cagle's seen the Terrapins battle quite a bit. I've been impressed with the way Maryland has fouled off pitches and extended at bats. Another that, foul. But that's, you know, that veterans do that. I mean, and, and I know they've got some freshmen in their lineup, but they've got a lot of veterans sprinkled in, in the lineup as well. And, you know, it's, it's just one of those those things is going to come with time. And I'm, I'm telling you that two years from now, a year from now, five years from now, you're going to see that those kind of things happen here every day. But up and away, to your point, you look at Clemson's lineup, five freshmen, four juniors, one senior, Bonamy, the grad transfer from Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. From Maryland, you got two seniors, three juniors, two sophomores, two freshmen in the line. Right. Payoff pitch. Misses. And the inning continues. A great at-bat that time by Kufta. It was. She battled, battled off a lot of pitches and worked it till Cagle missed up and out. Now, Taylor Ligori grounded into a double play, a run scored. Technically no RBI there, but it may as well have been as she rips one back through the box for a base hit. That ball was hit firm. That was the hardest hit ball of the day right there by a long shot. Yep. She got a lot of the bat on a lot of the ball. That's going to bring up Mulgaris with two outs and a runner in scoring position. He got pitcher and catcher conversation. Is this just a settle down chit chat with Cagle here? Settle down. You got a base open. You don't have to uh, give up anything fat. Well, actually, the base is the base. First base is occupied, but it still don't serve up anything fat. You know, make her work for it. And when I say a fat pitch, I mean a, a ball that just lives in the zone and it looks like a beach ball when it comes through. Kind of like the last one? Yep. Yes. Shelby Youngkin swings and misses. Having a little better location from Cagle, 0 and 1. Two and two thirds innings, 57 pitches already for Cagle in this game. She has thrown a lot of pitches. You're, uh, you're exactly right. She's had a lot of 2-2, two, 3-2 two, two counts. And, uh, again, don't take anything away from the uh, the hitters of Maryland, you know, fouling off pitches. But uh, the name of the game is throw strikes. Oh, boy, that one got away. And all the way to the backstop, and both runners will advance. Now you have a base open. <laughs> <laughs> you can work around her. A bit of prophecy <laughs> from the broadcast booth here. She just squeezed the change up that yep. time. Yeah. Stuck to her fingers. Two and one. A little bit low. And if you're right here at three and one, you got to lose your pride if you're Kegel and make a good pitch. And if she, if she takes ball four, she takes ball four. I would much prefer to have bases loaded than one on and two in. Cuffed at third, Liguori at second. That one tapped foul, wide of the bag at first. Vulgaris with Yunkin on deck. Opportunity here with two outs and two aboard in scoring position. Already some big spots for these young pitchers. We've seen White's work out of it. We'll see what Cagle can do on a 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. She struck her out, and the sides retired. The Tigers down one. We'll bat again. one nothing to score as we head to the bottom of the third inning for 
Clemson. They'll go back to the top of the order with Cami Pereira set to go against Courtney White, who's been outstanding so far today. Coming in, she started twice, seven and a third innings, four strikeouts. In the game today, she's pitched two innings. She's got five strikeouts against Clemson. And Wynn picking up a little bit at the ballpark. Blowing in today. Left-hand batter Pereira standing in against White. Third baseman creeping in, and that pitch way up and in. Kufta trying to protect against a slap or a bunt attempt here by Pereira. Struck out her first time up. Here comes the 1-0 from White. Big cut there by Pereira, 1-1. One and one. See, Junior from Winston-Salem trying to get aboard this time. One of five strikeout victims the first time through for White. Yeah, she, uh, she kind of had her way first time through the batting order. Pitch. Hit foul. Oh, an opportunity for a big play there down the third baseline. And Should have made it. Yeah, fan left some to be desired there on the back end of that one. You got to make that play. Even though it's a new program, you still got to throw and catch the ball. Yeah, you do. Looks like we may have to have a workout session with the fans. <laughs> Man, a big crowd here on fan day. Maybe they add that next year. Yeah. One, two, misses high. Two and two now. The count to Pereira. Well, speaking of that, you know a, a good deal about building a program from the ground up. You've done it yourself and built a champion. What are some of the things that John Rittman's had to navigate the last couple of years as even to get ready for a game to be played? Well, the first of all, you've got you, you've got to recruit as we see a ground ball hit softly out to second base for the first out. You, you've got to sell a vision uh, while you're out recruiting because you're always recruiting. You've got to go out and you don't have a facility to show. You don't have a lot of things to uh, that you can lay in front of people. So you have to sell a vision. Then you have to work closely with your administration and be sure that you do everything you know, correctly to lay out the, a foundation for a great culture. And he's hit both of those with big check marks. Uh, and then, you know, as you get closer, you start filling in the pieces. You start, you know, okay, we got our first commitment. Okay, now we got this, we got that. And it's a slow process. And then you, all while you're doing that, you're trying to figure out what kind of staff you're gonna build. Who can I get to come work with me? And uh, so there's a lot of pieces to it. I, I remember when we were doing it, and of course this was uh, in the early 90s, uh, a little bit different time, but uh, it was really interesting uh, to go through that process. And I tell you, we had a lot of luck, but uh, it, building that program was, was a lot of fun. You built it quickly into a champion, too. It didn't take you a whole lot of time. We were very fortunate. Uh, we, uh, nice pitch that time down in the zone by White. We were playing softball uh, before the ACC and the SEC got involved in it, so we were able to go out and recruit some really good players, and we did hit the ground running, and uh, I'm eternally grateful you know, to those players. One ball and two strikes to count. White's working ahead now with a right-hand batting Matamore. Pitch coming, foul straight back. Matamore's all over that. She sure was. She had a good cut at that pitch. Hitting 286. Strikeout victim in the first inning. In fact, White struck out the side in the first inning. Yes, she got herself into trouble in the second, and you're looking more like that. Dr. Jekyll version, yeah. so to speak, here in the third. Yeah. Way upstairs that time. She's got a lively right arm. I tell you right now, that is a lively right arm. Like the uh, cap to the sprinkler head came off back there in the mound. Now that is the first year of the program problem. Yes, it is. Here you see it. Great camera work by our folks behind the plate that time. 
I tell you, that, that crew led by Sander Sullivan is sharp as a tack. Bob Schuster, a veteran of veterans behind the plate. There's a foul yeah. back. He's covered a lot of different big events. Two and two the count. Bases clear and one out. White's checking that armband for the sign. Way upstairs. Tried to take some off that time and missed. Looked like she, that's one of the few pitches I've seen her aim. Like she was trying to aim that one. So just letting it go. She's got a very lively arm. Both pitchers that we're, we're, we're watching today have good arms. Payoff pitch here with one away. Here it comes. Up and away. Mattimore works a one-out walk. Now that was a much better at bat that time by Mattimore. If you remember, she helped get herself out, chasing a bad pitch in the first inning. But look at this right here. Nice discipline right there. Let the pitch work his way out of the zone. And you got yourself a base runner. And you got a base runner with a pretty good hitter coming up. And Valerie Cagle, who's had a very good start to her career, 304 batter. She did strike out in the first inning. A couple of home runs already. Clemson certainly would take that right here, a third. The Terrapins are playing her straight away in the outfield. He shoots one the opposite way, foul. And I believe she, the home run she hit, was it opposite field? Or it was, was it? left center yeah. field the other night. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, she uh, she does a very nice job with the bat. As we talked about, she's an outstanding athlete. Not only does she pitch, but she plays a great game of, in the outfield and can swing the bat. Strike called. Paint the corner again. Well, the trick to this game is hitting your spots. I mean, you know, change speeds, hit spots, you win. And it's simple. Some of the life of a freshman, you talked about trying to spot the ball instead of just throwing it and yeah. missing spots. And that time, she's able to rear back and yeah. hit her spot. She missed it there one and two, but oscillating back and forth like right. that. It's basically the life of a coach coaching in freshman, out, isn't it? In, out, up, down, change speed, you know. Um, I tell you right now, both coaches, you know, they're just, uh, you know, in a tight game like this, they're just living and dying on every pitch. Foul back again by Cagle. Uh, it's, it's really funny. One of the most helpless feelings in the world is to be a coach uh, out there at third base when a hitter's in the box and you're just there to, you're just there kind of hanging on. You can't tell that by looking at, at <laughs> Coach Rittman right now. Johnny Ballgame's enjoying this. Is he really as cool as a cucumber right now as he yeah, looks? That's him. Slow, even kill. The, uh, he's just, uh, I mean, just a good. I mean, just a good dude to play for. I mean, he he really is. He's invested in his players. He. Uh, he just does everything in a good way. Clemson got him when he was an assistant at Kansas. Right. Yeah. And longtime coach of Stanford. We showed the graphic earlier. That one fouled back again by Kegel as she continues to hang on. Ten years. Yep. With the national team. Yep. Yep. And uh, I was with him for about six of those. And uh, it was uh, just exhilarating. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but John Rittman was the, the head coach of Jessica Mendoza of ESPN when she played at Stanford and with the U.S. team. Not bad to put on a resume. Cagle shoots one to left on the move. Good play there. Nice. Making the grab. Yes. JoJo McCray. Nice job by JoJo McCray. If you'll watch, this ball's tailing away from her. Bat. Ball comes off the bat of a left-handed hitter down the left field line. It's going to tail away from you. And McCray just kept running, and she ran through the catch, and that was a great job. What she, what she did not do was decelerate. You'll watch. She hits it firmly. 
And McCray just uh, ran it down. Now M.K. Bonamy as the ball gets past the catcher, and that'll allow the runner, Mattimore, to move into scoring position now with two away. And how about this? What do you do on Valentine's Day with your wife or girlfriend? If you're Dabo Sweeney, you take your wife to the ballpark. How about that? How about that? And a fun fact, Kathleen Sweeney's goddaughter, M.K. Bonamy. How about that? She takes the strike in there, one and one. You may have seen on the edge there. Their son Will is here, and Dexter Lawrence. How about that? Former Tiger and member of the New York Giants, also in attendance on the front row. That's awesome to see. You see Kathleen there with her phone out. There's a ground ball foul, first base side. Now, now Mr. Sweeney, he, he works here, right? He does. Yeah. yeah. They've built a few buildings out beyond <laughs> left field and center field and right field for him. <laughs> oh, man, one of the great coaches in the country. And his impact is felt all over this campus for sure. You talk to any coach, they've got a Dabo Sweeney story. The one, two, swing and a miss, and down goes Bonamy, and another good finish for White in a bit of trouble. We're through three, Maryland clinging to a 1 0 lead. They'll bat when we come back. Back here in Clemson, three innings in the books. A 1-0 lead for Maryland alongside Scott Whitlock. William Quagamish with you. Coach, this is a 1-0 deficit for Clemson. It could be a lot worse if they hadn't played such fine defense behind Valerie Cagle. Great plays on defense have uh, kind of kept Clemson in this game. You watch right here. Double play ball. The damage control. And right here, you're going to see a strike, big strike out. Uh, and right there, they're trying to do the double steal. And the Tigers mow the runner down at the plate. And thusly, you have a 1-0 game. They're keeping it close. And Valerie Cagle has pitched a little better each inning she's been out there. And, and it's, it's going to be up to her now to kind of hold Maryland right where they are because Courtney Weich, her competitor in the other dugout is throwing a nice game of her own. And yeah, no question about it. White has been absolutely dealing. Cagle so far, three innings. Giving up a run with two walks, three strikeouts. They've all been big strikeouts, too, in big moments. Now she'll face six, seven, and eight in the order. Shelby Yonkin stands in. And left toe right on the edge of the batter's box, and she takes the called strike. Getting ahead is important, and that's what uh, that's what Cagle did right there. Yonkin takes a little bit low, ball one. Shelby Yonkin from Torrance, California. Junior for the Terrapins. Ground ball, second base, nice play, and a good recovery by Bonamy there to get the out as Pereira starts it. Absolutely nice play that time by the Clemson defense. You see Bonamy make an effort for the ball, but she, what she did, though, is she didn't give up on the play. When the ball got by her, she pivoted quickly, got over to the bag where she could receive the throw from Pereira. And it worked out perfectly. Now left-hand batter, and Taylor Pereira, Wilson. I'm sorry. And Pereira did a great job that time because she could have easily been shaded by the first baseman trying to make the play. But great job by everybody that time. Wilson takes a strike. Talked a lot about the makeup of this Clemson roster. That one misses high. 12 freshmen. So that means you basically have to ride the wave. And we've seen them have games where they have a handful of errors and it really costs them. We saw that last week down in Orlando. But then you see games like this where they played pristine defense behind their pitcher. 
Another chance at shortstop and an easy 6-3 put out there. What you're seeing is you're seeing a young pitcher just get on the job training. I mean, it's not like she's got a, a bunch of senior pitchers to work behind and learn from. And she's being asked to go out here and get Division I hitters out, experienced Division I hitters out. And at least so far in this game, it is my feeling that Cagle has gotten better every inning. And, and, and again, White has, has pitched very well each one her in. And so we're seeing two freshman throwers really, I mean, on the job training. Yeah, both pitchers really have done an outstanding job of controlling the opposing offense. Looking to slap. Campbell Klein takes down low. We've seen a few efforts to slap the ball, but we haven't seen anybody actually execute it so far today. Oh, well, but they there's slappers on both teams. But uh, you know, when we talk about slap hitting, we're talking about a, a left-handed hitter who actually starts in motion while she's inside the batter's box before she makes contact with the ball. What they're trying to do is just beat that ball in the ground and outrun it. Ground ball through the hole, base hit. Yep. Solid. You need to slap that one. Solid single that time, opposite way. Campbell Klein, her fourth hit of the season. Another look. Right, she slashed that thing very firmly in the 5-6 hole. Sixth hit of the game for Maryland. They've continued to put pressure on Clemson defensively. This is the nine-hole hitter, McCray. Made a nice running catch out in the outfield. And a runner going, throw down to second high, and it ends up in center field. That's another stolen base for Maryland. Yeah. That's twice high. It has missed the mark down at second base and uh, allowed the ball to get out to the outfield. Yep. A good slide that time right into the bag. Two for three and stolen base opportunities today. Kerr, the leadoff hitter with one, and now Klein's got one. And now a conversation here. Again, a potential settle down spot. You see both coaching staffs working overtime to try to rally their team and huddle them up and get them where they need to be. That, that was Tiger pitching coach Kyle Jamerson, former head coach of uh, Furman University. Very well respected coach. He's out there telling this pitcher, look, you got two outs. You got the nine hole hitter up there. Go get her. There's a swing and a miss. Klein two for two. The only player in the game with multiple hits thus far. Here in the top of the fourth. Standing at second base with two outs here. With their team up a run, a little bit high. It's high. JoJo McCray obviously would love to single and score a run, but the main thing she wants to do is keep the inning alive and flip the batting order. There's a smack down off the ground foul. One pitch away from getting out of it. Runner at second. Maryland, three hits or runners in scoring position. They all came early. But if you're Kegel right now, you gotta you gotta shut the door on, on this inning and keep your team nice and tight in the game. This is a spot where the, the pitcher's gotta execute, trust her stuff. If you're not gonna throw it by or induce a ground ball and get out of the inning. Leadoff hitter Kerr is on deck, and there's strike three called. Yep, and she knew it too. Great job that time by Cagle. She just mowed her down on the left side of the batter's box. There it goes. Nice job. Good spot there from Cagle, and now we'll head to the bottom of the fourth. The Tigers down a run, looking to square it when we return. And there you see the Tom Hash practice facility, an awfully impressive 
facility there for Clemson softball. They really tried to build not just this stadium, but it certainly is true with the stadium, the facilities, the coaches' offices, and everything else. Second to none, and done an outstanding job here of investing on the front end of softball and trying to be great right away. I've been to a lot of ballparks around this country, and this one doesn't take a back seat to anybody. Marissa Gombarda swings at the first pitch, and that's foul. And boy, Wilson took a stab at it right over there next to the padding, and it lacked a bit. Yep. Had a chance at an out that time. That had everybody moving over there on that play. First base coach had to scamper away. Gombarda grounded a third, her first time up. She is a free swinger at the plate. That time she misses low. White out on the mound. Three strong innings thus far. They've all looked a little bit different, but she's gotten out of each one of them unscathed. Six strikeouts. Yeah, she's uh, she has been kind of a, a thrill a minute. You know, you just uh, you know, one time completely dominant, next time. Walking batters, getting herself in a mess, making a great defensive player herself to get out of the inning. It's just been a little bit of everything. But the bottom line is she's up one nothing in the middle part of this game. On the road in front of a good crowd. Fantastic crowd today for a Friday afternoon. Swing and a miss. Gambarda, ball trickles away. Valentine's Day. We hadn't even mentioned that That's it's right. Valentine's Day. I want to wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day that observes Valentine's Day. If you don't observe Valentine's Day, have a nice Friday. <laughs> um, Tell you what, I don't think my wife is very encouraged that I buried the lead on Valentine's Day. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> two and two to count. High fly ball, left center field. Back it goes. See you later. That was no doubt about it. Weich made a mistake, left the ball up in the zone, and the Clemson hitter participated. That's exactly how that works. Marissa Gambarda, her second home run of the year, and you're right, that was a no doubter right off the barrel. And Gambarda just fried that thing out of here. And boy, you pitch your tail off like White, but anytime you're in a one run game, you're one mistake from being tied. And that's exactly where Maryland finds itself and, right now. And again, she's been making a living getting people out on the corners and down. And that pitch was left up and it went out. And now Hannah Goodwin. She had the only other hit of the day for the Tigers. Single back in the second inning, and there's a whiff on the first pitch. Goodwin was trying to hit one a little farther that time. <laughs> Chased the pitch. It was well out of the zone. You see, communication major out of West Columbia, South Carolina. You know, it's really interesting when you think about a player like Goodwin. There are a lot of players in the state of South Carolina that would have loved to come to Clemson and play softball. And she can say that she was part of the first freshman class that ever signed as an in-state native. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, don't want to oversell it, but it's just so big and so important to this region that Clemson University has brought uh, softball to its campus. Two balls and a strike to count. John Rittman knew him when he came here. He signed Carly Hoover at Stanford. She played about five minutes up the road at Daniel High School. There's a rip to left and a base hit for Goodwin. Okay. No outs and a runner at first as Clemson starting to barrel up Weich a little bit here in the fourth. Good swing there by the freshman Goodwin. Now we're going to see pinch runner out at first base. 
Carly Shannon out there at first as this gives Courtney White a chance to maybe take a deep breath. He's getting some encouragement from Kufta, a third baseman. Yeah, John Rittman out going through the changes here with the home plate umpire. What you're seeing right now is you're seeing White pitch under stress for the first time. The home run kind of the, the 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 home run kind of knocked the lid off the hit barrel, uh, and uh, it's going to be real interesting to see how she responds. Right now, as you see on your screen, she's out there smiling and grinning with her with her teammates, and uh, that's a good sign. She needs to remember the fact that she is a college pitcher and that it is a one-one game, and you know, and she just needs to do her thing. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, what both of these coaches do with their pitching late in the game. Do, do they go to the bullpen or do they let them try to weather the storm? But right now what right now what you're going to see is you're going to see uh, Clemson now try to push the runner over. You can almost play this like just the you know, top of the inning, the base runners got on. Uh, they're going to try to move the runner here some way or uh, another. And that runner is going to be Carly Shannon, a freshman out of Chester, South Carolina. She'll be running at first base. And then once the conversations close out here, I think we're going to see number 13, Abby Stewart, freshman out of North Carolina. Hit technically. Bailey Taylor is the DP for the Tigers today. She's been out at third base. Stewart listed as a third baseman, and right. she'll come in the game. And now you see the bullpen warming up, and that's certainly what you've talked about, sort of that balancing act with do I profess my trust in my freshman on the mound, or do I try to alleviate some of that pressure by putting in a new arm? Well, I can understand. This, this is, the, uh, I believe, the third time through the batting order. Or is this the second time? Second the time, but second you're getting down to the, the end order, of the second time. But you're getting it. You're getting down toward the bottom of the second time. You're in the middle part of the game. Uh, I could see getting some people working in the bullpen. And now Stewart will stand in. Get a look at the five-nine freshman. Four for eight. This is a role she likes, obviously. Runner going, throw down to second, not in time. She got a great jump that time. Had the base stolen halfway there. If you'll watch, the throw was away from the shortstop coming across, and she got in there easily. Now runner at second, nobody out for Stewart. Already a home run to her credit, and three doubles. All four hits have gone for extra bases so far for Stewart, and that pitch missed again. Good job of you. Good, excuse me. Good job of using your personnel by Ritman. He uh, pushes the buttons, gets some, gets a pair of legs out there that can steal a base, and now got two or three cracks at taking a lead in this game. Here's the one-one, and yeah, those are not boos. They're chanting stew. Folks are wondering. White, a good chance here to get out. One and two, the count. She's worked out of these types of situations all afternoon. Downstairs, two and two. It's getting a little bit more stressful for her out there, though. She's uh, like, a, you know, the, uh, the home run. It did two things. It rocked her confidence a little bit, but it pumped a lot of confidence in that first base dugout. So it's a little, you know, momentum's a fickle thing, and it has just definitely moved. But, but she, but to her, but to her credit, she bears down and gets a strikeout for the first out. Abby Stewart strikes out for the first time this season, first time in her career, and that's a good pitch, up and in, a little rise action that time from White. Your business. She sure did. She just took care of business. Now Logaleo stands back in there. She struck out back in the third inning. 
There's a bunt down toward first, and it'll go foul. Good idea there for Logaleo. Yeah, it was a good idea. Ball spun foul. You'll see she didn't get the bat head completely out across the front part of the corner with the plate. Created an angle that allowed the ball to spin foul. John Rittman running through some signs in the third base coach's box. Hadn't done that a lot today, but you know they're at least putting the thought in Maryland's mind that something's brewing right now. Yeah. Wilson creeping in, awaiting the bunt, and a swing away and a foul straight back. But now, if you're white, you got her in an 0-2 hole. Uh, you've got to really th – this is a big, big point of the game for both teams. You've had the, the go-ahead run out at second base with nobody out, and now she's in a, at, a, at a place where if she can get one more pitch – by the hitter, she's going to have a chance to get it to two outs and have a great opportunity to get out with no more damage. She sticks the bat out. And Good job that foul. time by Logaleo of fouling it off. Aaliyah Logaleo hanging in there. She's 0 for 1 today. She walked once, struck out once. This is her first start. Freshman awaits and pops it foul back to the netting. Hanging in at 0-2, and, and White's not giving in an inch. Isn't it funny how this game is? I mean, uh, Clemson had struggled to get good at bats going, and, and White was just cruising along, and then all of a sudden, you know, it just swings back and forth. That's, that's what happens in fast pitch softball. It just occurs suddenly. Tigers hoping for a sudden change here as we're tied at one in the bottom of four. Clemson on the home run by Gombarda is tied it, and that ball is lifted high and deep to right center field in the gap. That's going to get down and off the wall. Rounding third to score is Shannon heading into third safely is Logaleo, and Clemson's up a run two to one, and the crowd is on its feet for good reason. What a great job of hitting that time by Logaleo. She hit it where it was pitched. It was outside. She went with the pitch, drove it into the right center field gap, chased the base runner home as she slid into third with a triple. Tigers now up a run, and they have flipped the script in this game, in this inning, as there you see Shannon with the go-ahead run. And good base running again for Logaleo as there you see her. Her first hit as a collegiate athlete. How cool is that to drive in the go-ahead run at home in an environment like this? What a special moment for that youngster. And I see Coach Montgomery's just, just burning his eyes down at his bullpen, wanting that relief pitcher to get ready quickly. If you read his body language, JoJo High, it may be the last batter that White faces. Runner at third, one out. A lot of ways to get this run home if you're Clemson. He is visibly annoyed that is. I think he's right now trying to buy some time or he's going to go ahead and make a change. Yeah, I think he could pick him up just a little bit on the on-field mic there. He yeah. said, we're going to make a change. And so he will go to his bullpen. Facing the nine hitter in Hyatt. And he's going to chat it up with everybody there in the circle. There you see the new pitcher, Amelia Jarecki, yep. sophomore. She's warming down there. Jarecki's 1-0 one, one on the year. She got the win against Corpus Christi. I'm not sure exactly what's happening here, but... Wait a minute. Jarecki is down there warming up, but she's not going to come in the game. It's not going to be her, is it? No, it's going to be Schulterbeck. That's exactly right. Senator Trinity Schulterbeck, another freshman who has uh, worked in three games, started two of them, right now carrying a 6.52 ERA. And yeah, White will leave the circle now. And seat ground to Slaughterbeck, a freshman out of Williamsport, Maryland. So, yeah, we got some great shots of uh, 
Amelia Jarecki warming up, and now they go to Schlotterbeck out of the dugout. And we'll see what Maryland could do there. Again, Clemson up a run, two to one, and you could tell that the Maryland staff and Mark Montgomery were a little bit concerned about White's there. Heading into the fourth, they got the bullpen going a little bit, particularly in earnest when Gambarda launched one out of here to start this half inning. And now with things coming apart a little bit at the seams, you've turned to another option on the mound. This, this is a very, very difficult spot to be in if you're a coach, particularly a first-year head coach in your sixth game with your team, and you're really just figuring out your roster still. Yep, yeah, and it's a lot of lot of similarities. They're, uh, they're both trying to establish themselves, and, uh, you know, it was just amazing how quick it went away for Weich. But now, Maryland's job is really simple right now. They need to limit the damage. Well, I tell you what, a strikeout would be great. And Slaughterbeck on the year, she's pitched nine two-thirds innings, only three strikeouts. He put this ball in play. If you're Clemson, again, there's a lot of ways to get a runner home from third and one out. And with the bottom of the order up with Hyatt, anything besides a strikeout has a pretty decent chance of getting an insurance run home here in the bottom of the fourth as we see continued conversations down there with Mark Montgomery and our home plate umpire, Rodney Graves. Uh, they're making all sorts of changes right here. we got a lot of stuff going on. I'll tell you what would be a great play. I, it, I, I'm not even hinting that it would happen. But right now on the first pitch would be a great spot to squeeze because she's going to come in here and she's going to want to get ahead in the count. That's right. Okay, she's going to want to establish herself. You're down in the nine hole in the batting order. You know, you got a 167 hitter in there right now. And this would be a great time just to lay one down. We'll see what they do here. A 1-0 count to Slaughterbeck. Rather, from Slaughterbeck to Hyatt, and she takes the strike. No sign of squeeze right there. How much riverboat gamblers John Rittman he's got not, in him? He's not going to coach himself out of an inning. There he goes he with the squeeze. Let's see if it works, and it does. But How about will, that? And he will call the squeeze when it's in <laughs> place. I hate that I did that. <laughs> you know, now they're going to expect me to do that every game. But You're literally just talking about how he's not going to take himself out of an inning, but then he did exactly what you were talking about. Might yeah. take you out of an inning with the squeeze play. Yeah. And a great job running from third to home for Aliyah Logaleo. But be sure you let the record show and you be sure that Coach Rittman knows I called it. We made a note. and uh, Mark the tape. That was perfectly executed it too sure at the plate it by sure was. That right there, uh, the, the situation just called for it. Now what Pereira's you, at the plate. She what you got the there is you got production from the bottom of your batting order. Now think about that. That is so huge to a team. Yeah, just in that inning alone, or in this half inning alone, the bottom of the order gave you a triple and a single. Right. And the six hitter Goodwin, as that one's fouled by Pereira. Yeah, she was six hitter Goodwin hit. single, too. Yeah, she was bunting for a base hit right there. But the squeeze play, if we get a chance to see it from an angle where we can see everything happening, that was done just remarkably well. Uh, it all starts, obviously, with McCray getting the bunt down. And uh, but the base runner broke and just really did a great job, excuse me, of uh, Hyatt getting the bunt down. And uh, it was just a great job of blasting and getting across the plate. Made a great slide, didn't give the catcher anything to tag. Runner at first now with one away, Pereira one two pitch to her. She hits one straight up and back out of play. Off the roof above us. Now I'm new to this facility. Can, can one get to us up here? Uh, I, it would probably take a suspension of the laws of gravity to spin up here. I think we'll be okay. All right. Well, 
Here you I'm, see us. We appreciate that. Camera crew in the outfield. Uh, we're going to uh, hold our producer, Sandra Sullivan, accountable if we get hit. That's right. Because that camera shot jinxed it. There's no way they're going to be able to get it up over the net in here. And you watch. One of us is going to yeah, have to now, make a play here. Yeah, now we're yeah. <laughs> we're just a, a con concussion waiting to happen. That's now. right. Strike out there. A good bit of pitching that time. Yes, it was. I slaughter back. And now Mattimore stands in. 0 for 1. Walked her last time up in the third inning. There's a ball low. Tell you, it's been a been a big inning for the Tigers, and look how things have turned around. They've got four hits in the game, three of them in this inning. I believe I'm right on that. That's right. And uh, misses away. Yeah. Hyatt running at first. Clemson enjoying production up and down the lineup. Mattimore walked and was stranded at second last half inning, and she takes a little bit tight. 3-0 the count to her. Yep. Check their swing a little bit. Let's take a look. She stopped the swing yep. way in advance. Yeah, she, she didn't swing. Slaughterbeck trying to battle back here. Takes wide, ball four. And now, if you're Slaughterbeck, you are dancing with the devil because you have got a big time hitter coming to the plate now. And Valerie Cagle 0 for 2, a strikeout, a fly out to left. It was a fine play from McCray that robbed her of a hit the first time. And there you see, not missing by much. That was a pitch that White, because she, the way she was throwing it and the way it was framed, she was getting that call earlier in this game. That's correct. Two on, two outs. Cagle, a healthy cut. Yeah, she took a big rip at that one. Cagle just needs to stay within herself. Slaughterbeck needs to let Cagle help her as much as she will. Great matchup. Game within the game. 3-1. The score and the 0-1 pitch upstairs. This is what see right here. This is what Cagle's capable of. Wednesday, you see she drove a ball right out of the ballpark. Right there it goes. He talked about earlier to the opposite field, so not just pull side power. There's a swing and a miss there, one and two. Boy, she's swinging so hard, both feet are almost coming off the ground. <laughs> Maybe a deep breath spot here for the freshman. Ground ball, easy play. Second to short as the side is retired, but three runs for Clemson. We'll be back in just a John Ripman pacing around. A little bit of pep in his step after a three-run inning. Gives his team a 3-1 lead. Alongside Hall of Famer Scott Whitlock, William Quackenbush with you. Glad to have you with us here on a beautiful Friday afternoon here in Clemson at Clemson Softball Stadium. And the Tigers back at it defensively as Maryland, who's led since the top of the first, now finds themselves at bat trailing for the first time today. And, Qualk, if, you, if you're Clemson now, what you want to watch, if you're a fan right now, what you want to watch is it, can this young freshman pitcher come out here now and give them a shutdown inning? The last thing you want to do, that was a great out. Well, that's a great out right there. The last thing you want to do after you score runs is go back out and give up runs and to get a, shutdown, a good shutdown inning. And that right there is a great out to start. It's just a little soft grounder back, fills the position, gets the out. So what you want to see now, if you're John Rittman, is you want, you want to see a shutdown inning right here. And Regan Kerr, one pitch, one out. That's a leadoff hitter, too, as Maryland's got the top of the order in there trying to drag a bunt. Yep. And unable to do so is Amanda Brashear, one for two today. Yes, that was a slap bunt. She was running, that was a run bunt. She was going to drag it through there. 
Uh, way in at third. Taylor back in the game as the pitch rolls up there. If you notice, you'll see that, that her feet are in her feet are in motion before she even attempts to consider swinging, and that shows you that the, that hitter is a slapper. Pitch misses away. If you're calling pitches from the dugout against a slapper, does that change what you want your pitcher to do? Do you want to try to mix speeds and throw off timing and rhythm? Well, it can at times. Uh, you, you know, there, there's ways to pitch slappers. P slappers do not like the ball inside because they want something out that they can put in the ground over there on the left side of the infield. So they don't like to be thrown in, you know. And, uh, and it, but if you're going to throw away to a slapper, you want to be down. So, and another great pitch against a slapper is a changeup. Changeup works about any time, doesn't it? It sure does. If you've got one, keep it. There's a foul straight back. No slap in there. You just ripped it from no. this year. Still two and two, one out, and the base is clear. Clemson up a pair of runs. Here in the top of the fifth. There's a changeup from Cagle. Boy, you can see the confidence growing in her now. Not even really a bad swing. Brashear stayed back on it. He's got it by her. Two outs now as Kufta stands in. Strike call. This is maybe the best groove we've seen her in in terms of just her rhythm on the mound. And part of it is she didn't have anybody on base she's working around this half inning. I think she's gotten better every inning. Uh, and I, I think obviously a two-run lead helps you relax even more. Swing and a miss. She's dealing the cards right now. No doubt. One strike away from a one, two, three. Now what you don't want to do is get too brave right here. You got an 0-2 count, and I know you're pumping gas, but stay within yourself and make good pitches. Kufta's been aboard twice, single in the first, walked in the third. Way up high. That was something off speed. Kegel really has been solid today, but she has yet to record a 1-2-3 inning to this point. She could do it with one strike here. Foul straight back. I'll tell you the one thing with Kufta, she has battled every at bat. She fouls off pitches, she runs, you know, she just extends the game. It's just uh, amazing. One and two, way up high again. Two and two. We've got, what, Liberty and Clemson's baseball team getting ready to square off or if they just started over there. They've started. They're actually in the top of the second right now, directly behind us. Oh, if, you're, if you're in the area, you ought to get in your car and get over here and see some of it. Two-two, swing and a miss. There it is. And a one-two-three inning for Valerie Cagle in the circle. We'll see her and her teammates back at the plate when we return in just a moment. And here's what happened in the fourth inning. The last time Clemson was at the bat, we saw a big fly from Gambarda out of here to tie the game. And then a lot of fireworks around the bases, Coach. Yep, saw a lot of things happen. There's your triple right there, scoring a run. And then there's the squeeze play. Great slide Great there at home slide. play, too. Gave them absolutely nothing to tag. And now Clemson's up a pair of runs, three to one. And just like we talked about Maryland batting for the first time today behind, Clemson for the first time starts a half inning ahead. A easier time breathing for John Ribman down at third base. 
And M.K. Bonham, he grounds one through the left side, a base hit to start things off here in the fifth. Tell you what, hitting's contagious. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Clemson now with six hits in the game. Maryland had the first five hits of the game before Clemson had one, and now the Tigers in the last two innings have really loaded up. And in particular, Marissa Gambarda got the ball rolling. You just saw her big fly out to dead center field back in the fourth, and she's back for more here in the fifth. Yeah, she, uh, she really nailed that ball. Time called at the plate. Gambarda, the reigning Southern Conference Player of the Year. At Furman last year, she hit 348 with 16 home runs and a 754 slugging percentage. In other words, that wasn't her first home run. Absolutely. She, she does seem to know what to do with the bat. She does. Yeah, she holds it on the right <laughs> end and everything. I mean, that's a, that's a good sign. And the fact that you can hit, hit a ball out of here on a rail like she did, it makes it even better. 2-0 the count. Slaughterback being careful with her and for good reason. Yeah, but she's been careful right into a 2-0 hole. Now she's got to be a little bit more around the plate, and this could end up being bad for her. Gambarda takes the strike. Little a little bluff throw to first. A nice pitch on the outside part of the plate. We've seen Bonamy be super aggressive with those leads off of the bags. Yep. Well, she does a lot of, she does a good job of bluffing. I mean, she just keeps them think, you know, wondering if she's going to do something or not. Foul back. You can tell she's trying to time up the pitcher. Already a stolen base on the year for Bonamy. During the 2020 season, the Tigers are not going to be known as a base stealing ball club. But uh, as the year goes on and they get more experience and more confidence, you'll see them run more, but usually maybe hit and run and things like that. 2-2 Two -two missed up and away. And again, a full count. Boy, how many full counts have we seen today? We have seen a lot of pitches today. I don't know, I don't know what the pitch totals are, but we have seen a lot of pitches. Let's do a little quick math here. As of right now, I think I'm right in saying Maryland has 104 pitches and Clemson has thrown 92. That's a lot. Foul ball straight back. A lot of fighting from hitters too. It's not like it's been a walk fest either. All right. There's been a lot of Absolutely. two strike at bats. Absolutely. You see another one. Fans stoic there behind the plate, except for maybe a couple of. Uh, one guy moved like three minutes after it hit it. <laughs> Foul ball call. Good call by our home plate umpire, Rodney Graves. Ball hit off the foot hey. of Gambarda, and she's still around with two strikes. Yeah, old Rodney Graves, he's seen it all in his career. You've had him a time or two, I take it? Yeah, he's had the pleasure of telling me to be quiet once or twice. <laughs> I don't think he ever personally asked me to leave early, but a couple of those fine men gave me the day <laughs> off every once in a while. And the pitch hits Gambarda in the leg, and so Clemson in business again. You see right there, that was, that, now, now I want to, we'll see the pit, pitch first, but I got to show you something. I'll talk about something. It's really good. This is when you know you're going to get pitch ran for. Gombarda got hit in the leg by the pitch, and while she's still in the batter's box, Coach Rittman is coming down the line, calling time, <laughs> wanting to put a pinch runner in. I'm pretty sure that's what's about to happen here. Something tells me that might not be breaking news to hurry. No, no I don't think it is. <laughs> but, when, but when the coach calls, <laughs> calls time while you're still in the batter's box after being hit, you know that somebody's going to run for you. And that is actually happening as we speak, as the wheels have turned and have resulted in number 24, Ariel Oda, running out at first base. That bench is loaded with freshmen. 
This one, a freshman from Buford, Georgia. She and JoJo Hyatt, teammates at Buford High School. And the head coach at Buford High School, Tony Wolf, was a college baseball teammate of yours truly. How about that? Uh-huh. Tony Wolf was a great pitcher at Piedmont College. I was on the team at Piedmont College. How about that? Yeah. A small world. Tony is a great baseball softball man. Won multiple state championships in softball. There's a little looper to shallow center. It falls. Could have a play at third, but they don't. Oh. The lead runner had to hang out because you couldn't tell if it was going to get down or not. We talked about Bonamy, a very good base runner. She was about a right. step no more than that off the second base and immediately hightailed it down to third. And now the bases are loaded with nobody out. And this is crunch time. If you're new to softball now, eight runs after five is a run rule. They can call this game at nine to one. And again, we're putting the car before the horse a little bit. But a 3-1 with the bases loaded and nobody out. And Maryland already on their second pitcher. You can tell that Mark Montgomery understands this is a big spot in the game. you got to have the right people in the right spots here. Right. right we're going to see. What are we seeing here now? I'm trying to get a feel for what's taking place. And we hadn't really seen any no player movement here. No. Montgomery talking to his coaches at the front of the dugout. He's been standing toward the back of the dugout, at least from our vantage point, more down toward the third base bag. And Bailey Taylor's in there. Montgomery, I don't know if he was checking something with a lineup card or something like that, but he went to talk to the umpire with a lineup card in his hand, and there has not been a change made. Yeah, he may have not gotten one of the changes that, that Clemson did. And he was just getting there, getting clarification to be sure everything was the way they needed it. But right here is a big spot where Taylor can really open things up. Pitch, check their swing, not in time. And now ahead, nothing in two. Taylor almost full swing at that. Yeah, that got, yeah, that got through the zone. 0-2 oh, to count, so maybe that little diversion was all that Schlotterbeck needed to settle in a bit. The 0-2, way up and outside. Well, if you're Clemson right now, you got to put the foot on the gas and separate yourself from this Maryland team. The two-run lead is great. The five-run lead is wonderful. Yes, sir. The one-two pitch outside. See, I think she's nibbling too much right now. I think she's, she's really thinking about it, trying to aim the ball a little bit, trying to help it. And these, uh, these, these Clemson hitters have jumped all over it here. And misses again, three and two. You go from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. That's right. And missing really in the same spot. Yeah, you're nibbling way too much. Because she's just got the hitter right back in the, uh, she's got the hitter right back in the uh, at bat now. This goes from a pitcher's at bat to a hitter's at bat. Bailey Taylor, strikeout array today, a pop up on the infield. Shortstop makes the play. A big first out as Kerr corrals it. That was a nice pitch to get out of the. Get out of that at bat by Schlotterbeck, inducing an infield fly. And you did see the home plate umpire immediately raise his hand uh, to put the infield fly in effect. Aaliyah Logaleo with a really big at bat her last time up. She worked the count deep and got an opposite field triple that drove in the go ahead run and then scored on the squeeze play. Yeah. And now she finds herself down, nothing in one with Slaughterbeck dealing now in the circle. And I'll tell you right now, she'd take anything right now for a single. The 1 outside corner. Yeah. 
you got to give the you got to give Slaughterbeck credit. I mean, she's come back and thrown two very good pitches to start this at bat. Logaleo awaits the 0-2. Slaughterbeck, here it comes. Bouncer, good play by Slaughterbeck to the plate for one. That's all they'll get. Nice job of filling her position. And the ball spun her around, and she did a great job of getting the out at the plate. Look at that. Very nice presence. Well done. Now JoJo Hyatt. We saw her with the squeeze play the last time up. They gave her credit for a single and an RBI in that instance. And right now, Slaughterbeck is doing a remarkable job of getting out of a mess. Bases loaded, nobody out, down two runs and haven't given up a pair of singles sandwiched around a hit batter on a 3-2 pitch. And she has gotten back-to-back -back put outs on the infield, including one herself. This would be one heck of a Harry Houdini magic act if it she could get be. out of this with no runs crossing. You better know it. Pitch, foul back. These base runners all belong to her. And she would love to help her team out by taking care of her own business. Jojo Hyatt's up there with the simple purpose of busting this game open. I mean, that's what I love about this sport. It just lays out right in front of you. That's a shot through the right side. There it is. One runner in. That's all that'll score as they'll hold the runner. Goodwin at third. But a good piece of hitting again by the nine hitter in the order, JoJo Hyatt. And went, Clemson extends the lead. Went with the pitch and drove it right between the second baseman and the first baseman. And now you flip the batting order and you're back at the top. You got Perea. Perea's had a bit of a tough day. A couple of strikeouts and a ground out right at the second baseman. Takes a strike there. I'll tell you, William, coaches love two out hits. Yes, sir. There's a looper wide at third and foul. It'll drop just out of the reach of Kufta. That was Clemson's first two out hit of the day on that note. Those were big. And Maryland was getting them early. Yep. Maryland three for six runners in scoring position early in this game. They're now three for eight with a pair of two out hits in seven at-bats. There's a grounder right at the second baseman, and the tag will be applied to Hyatt by Ligori, and the inning is over. But Clemson tacks on another and leads by three as we head to the sixth in just a moment. Back in the circle here in Clemson Softball Stadium, Valerie Cagle, the freshman, five strong innings, none better than her fifth inning. That was outstanding, Coach. She went one, two, three, down went Maryland. Yep, she uh, helped herself, too, by filling the position and throwing a lot of strikes. And after scoring those those three runs, it was very, very big for her ball club for her to go out and shut everybody down. There you see the freshman again, a homeschool product out of Yorktown, Virginia, and doing an excellent job for John Rittman's team here. Going to get back to 500 as a team this afternoon in front of the home fans. And up three runs. She's got a lead to protect now against right-hand batter. One pitch and one out. Taylor Ligori sat down. you got to be loving that. She did that to start off the last inning, too. One pitch, one out. Um, that is just a way to live right there. 
Goes up and gets a nice ground ball right to the shortstop. One down. And that's exactly what part of town you want to be living in right now with a three-run lead. That was a cleanup hitter, Liguori, too. And now yeah. he faces Gracie Vulgaris. Clemson with some changes in the outfield, by the way. I'll tell you about those in a second. Pitch. This is low. Logaleo. Leah Logaleo moving from center field to left. They've moved Matamore from left to right. And Ariel Oda is now in center field. Stayed in after she came in to pinch run. So Gambarda takes a seat for the time being. Swing and a miss by Vulgaris. I tell you, I mean, the Clemson fans should, should really be impressed with the fact of, of watching this classroom session for, uh, for Cagle because she's learning something every time she goes out there, and she's gotten better each inning. Oh, cue shot down the first baseline foul. And, I, you know, th this is a sign of things to come. It's not always going to be like this. It's going to be choppy at times throughout this season, I'm sure. But this is a great example of a team learning how to play together and how to endure together in the middle of a, a tightly contested ball game. Check swing and just beyond the chalk foul. That thing almost spun fair. You watch this thing go down. It's going to go down. And you see it didn't hit her, but that thing almost spun fair. Here's Vulgaris, waits a pitch again, and tipped off the mitt. And again, here's a uh, an at-bat with a 2-2 count, and we've had a couple of foul balls. And we've seen this a lot today with hitters extending at-bats. Yeah, say what you want about both lineups. They have made the opposing pitcher work as hard as she possibly can on both sides, and there's a foul ball again. There you see the Pittsburgh Panthers. They'll take on Michigan State in a game that's supposed to first pitch in 10 minutes. I don't think they'll make that. That will be the second game here in this Big Ten ACC Challenge this weekend. And, and we've got a we got some action down in the Clemson bullpen too. You've got uh, Camel who pitched very well last time out. Five inning no hitter. Again, Clemson won eight nothing in five innings over Western Carolina on Wednesday. Here's a bouncer foul right side. One cool thing about softball, we talked about how pitchers can just go out there and keep on throwing and keep on throwing. Both these pitchers pitched on Wednesday, and now both may end up pitching today as well. And the chances are they could pitch tomorrow, and, and they may even pitch again on Sunday. That's one thing that's unique about the sport of fast pitch softball is you can, you can pitch multiple days in a row. And you see she coaxed a walk. A little bit upstairs. I think John Rittman thought it may have been a strike. Now Yonkin with a runner at first and one out. There's a rip foul back to the netting. Well, as much as it feels like Clemson's controlled this game the last two innings, you still, if you're Maryland, You've got the tying run on deck. You've got a great opportunity now as you can see Cagle losing a little bit from the last inning. Well, I'm sure. Ground ball. Let's see. Can they get the out at second? They don't. Everybody's safe. And again, Maryland putting pressure on the defense by putting balls in play. First and second, one out now with the bottom third of the order due up. It'll be interesting now to see how much longer. 
John Rittman will go. I'm surprised that somebody's not going out to the mound just to ask her how she's feeling. Just a glance out beyond the first base dugout. Camel has sat down, so either she's ready or yep. she's not coming in. And we'll see what this is. Been a lot of confusion with the scorecard today. Yes, sir. I mean, there, I mean, the lineup card. There have been some lengthy discussions. Yeah. And now let's see as Mark Montgomery walks down the third base line. And this may be checking to see a substitution here for Maryland. We may have a situation here. She's out. Wow. I believe the base runner at first base is out because I, I'm guessing she either hit out of order or was not reported as a substitution when she re, if she re-entered or something. Now, Mark Montgomery has now called his two base runners and the batter over to him. And so an out has been recorded here. You've got Vulgaris, you've got Yonkin. And let's see, yeah, they have they have moved Vulgaris back to first base. Yep. They caught. And Yonkin is out. Because it's a dead ball out and the runner can't advance. So a bit of luck there for the Tigers. Pitch misses. And Maryland gonna go with Sammy Steffen, a junior. And look how different the inning is now. Instead of the tying run in the batter's box, you got you got two yeah, you know, with only one out. Now you've got two outs and a chance to get out of this. These are the things that are drive you into retirement. <laughs> There's a foul off the bat of Stefan. Make you end up in a television booth somewhere. <laughs> you got the best seat in the house, don't you? Oh, no great, stress up here. Great, yeah, I'm about to say great seat and no stress. <laughs> Sammy Stefan, a junior from LaGrange, Ohio. 083 average with an RBI, and there's a strikeout swinging from Cagle. That's seven in the game. We head to the bottom of six of this strikeout pitch from Logan Cagle. Back to Clemson in a moment. As we head to the bottom of the sixth inning, a beautiful day at a beautiful ballpark. Clemson Softball Stadium. The third game ever inside this premises. They cut the ribbon not too long ago, just a few weeks ago. There you see John Ribbon as a part of the Ribbon cutting ceremony, a big, big day here for a lot of people in Clemson. You talk, Coach, about how big a day it is for this area, this part of the country, that Clemson University now supports softball. And I don't know that we can say it enough, how first class, the job that everybody did in making this 2020 season a reality and making this venue something special was. i tell you, it's very, very impressive. I had an opportunity to tour the facility recently. It's magnificent. Uh, Athletic Director Dan Radakovich and his whole team uh, of uh, staff members have done an excellent job of providing this young program with, with a, just a first-class venue. Uh, John Rittman, I know, is, feels very, very fortunate to, to be a part of it, and uh, it's going to pay dividends in the long run because great facilities will help you in recruiting. It'll help your players feel like champions, and I know that's what, what Clemson's all about. New pitcher for Maryland, Amelia Jarecki, is in the circle. Sophomore out of Lincoln, Nebraska. And now time's called one pitch in. We've got a visit to the circle. If you're Jarecki, that's probably not what you want. Ten and two-thirds innings, eight walks, 11 strikeouts. Got her first career win against Texas A&M Corpus Christi, which... Coincidentally, is the first and only win of Maryland season thus far. 
And right now, I'm really, you know, I think I'd have probably said that to her before she went out there, right? whatever it was, because <laughs> now, if you go back, if, if there's a reason to go back out there this inning, you got to make a change. And I don't know that they have anybody available right now to make a change because there's nobody warming up down there, obviously. It's the third pitcher that the Terps have used today. On a pitch. So, I, Two and zero, the count. She actually has the lowest ERA on the staff, three point nine four. And as you said, she uh, has led the team in innings pitched with ten. She's got ten and two thirds on the year. A little bit tight. Well, I just found out what the take signal is at Clemson. <laughs> Three balls and nothing. Mattamore looking to get a board in the first. There's a strike. Now there's a lead off the six, should say. Yep. I can't wait to tell Ripman I picked his signal. <laughs> and I did it the old fashioned way. With your eyes, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. No, no video cameras or trash cans, nope, right? None of that. <laughs> there's ball four. Mattamore going to hustle a little bit down to first. The ball. Scooted away from the catcher. You see Mattimore kind of, you can see her look back and think about at least trying to put some pressure on the defense there. Now Valerie Cagle 0 for 3 today. And that's no more as she rips a base hit to left. Well, she drove the ball well right there, jumped on the first pitch. One more look at it. Another hit to the opposite field. We've seen several of these both ways today. And that is the indication of good hitting instruction. Because if you try to pull those pitches, what you do is you roll right over the top of them and you hit a nice, easy ground ball. Nine hits for Clemson today. Up four to one. And here's MK Bonamy. And she loops one. Could be a problem. Foul down the right field line. Just foul. You know, it just, I, I don't know why I was thinking about this because I don't know why I think about a lot of things, but it just dawned on me how odd it is. You know, Maryland is such a long time ACC member come here representing the Big Ten. <laughs> and it just, uh, it just, it's just, just crazy. A one pitch. Boy, that change up. That took a while to get there. One and one. That thing stopped halfway. <laughs> if you can pick that up, you can swipe a bag on that pitch. <laughs> Standing. Rip foul. Look out, Pittsburgh. Panthers trying to get loose down there beyond first base. They may need to be on guard. They'll take on Michigan State. There's another non-traditional ACC Big Ten Challenge matchup. Yeah. Pitch. Another changeup. Yep. Again, high. Changing speeds is good, but you've got to be near the zone. You don't have to be in the zone. And if you're going to miss, you better miss low. Two, two. Swing and a miss. Do it eye high and right by her. Here's another look at it. Be right here. Nice rise ball that time. Now Ariel Oda stands in. She's hitting for the first time today. Oda. She squares to bunt. As you might suspect, she's a slapper. 
Playing in the outfield right now. Oda with one official at bat and two runs scored this season. Tells you about her role as a pinch runner. Strike called. Clemson, a lot more action this weekend. They'll play Maryland and Michigan State both tomorrow here and then Michigan State again on Sunday afternoon. Pitch misses high. And now John Rittman's going to call Oda over. They're going to have a chat about a couple things here and there. You can imagine, you talked about a little bit earlier how good of a teacher John Rittman is. You can imagine he's had to put on his teacher hat a lot with 12 freshmen on the roster. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, But he's got the perfect disposition for it. Very patient, uh, easy going. Now, he's a competitor. Don't get me wrong. Check but, swing right by him. But he is... Uh, I really believe they, they did just a outstanding job of identifying a, a very good person to launch a program. He's been there and done it all. Two, two, a change up is high, three and two. And you know, to top it all off, he's a good guy. And that, that's just, uh, I mean, it just, that means a lot to recruits. That means a lot to players. That means a lot to your administration. Ball four, and the bases are loaded with one out. I'll tell you one other thing about John Rittman that struck me is you got a guy who's made, what, 14, 15 NCAA tournaments? Yep. And when you talk to him before the season starts, his whole thought is about process. And he's process. saying, we're not going to be results-driven. Right. We're going to be process-driven. And a guy who's been results-driven his whole career, who's been living with great results, has basically had that paradigm shift, and he's done it naturally. Well, I mean, it's successful people usually find a way to be successful. And, I mean, he's been successful at it, you know, at his other stops. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't think he would have been hired here if uh, the Clemson family didn't think that he could be successful here. And uh, again, it, is, it doesn't take a lot of work to understand that, that Johnny Rittman is a top shelf coach and a top shelf person. And that's, you know, that's indicative of uh, what they're trying to do here at Clemson. And uh, it's gonna, it's gonna, in the long run, it's gonna work out great. Clemson Open, Hannah Goodwin can continue to be a successful person. She's three for three today. Yeah, she's out of week. She's up with the bases loaded and one out here in a big spot of 4-1, and she takes low, ball two. And Goodwin, a single in the second, a single in the fourth, and a single in the fifth. And she's right here where the bottom of the batting order starts, and the bottom of the order has been productive for the Tigers today. They certainly have. She took a rip at that and fouled it straight back, two and two. She was she was desperate to get a timeout then, but the home plate umpire, you know, kind of let her know, hey, look, this has been about a three-hour game. We're tired. <laughs> Let's get in here and go. Let's see. Yeah, she yeah, did try to get she it. She was wanting a timeout. Well, she tried to get it a bunch. Good win, ground ball right to the shortstop. Throw to third, they get one, and that's all they'll get. You can count the run, an RBI ground out for Hannah Goodwin, and Clemson extends the lead. It's 5-1, and yet if you're Maryland, you feel like you did a pretty good thing getting one of the lead runners there. Well, the out is always good. It's, uh, it's just been a, a really, really big turn of events. Uh, we saw the first three innings of this ball game. Maryland completely controlled the tempo, 
control everything about the ball game and from the fourth inning all fourth inning on has been all Tigers. Bailey Taylor, she's 0 for 2, and she's a little late. 0 and 1 the count. Strikeout and a pop out for Taylor here this afternoon. We're now past 5 o'clock here in Clemson. We appreciate you joining us. William Quaggan with Scott Whitlock with you. It's been fun working with you, William. I'll tell you what, the feeling's mutual. This has been quite an enjoyable afternoon. Really, in every respect, we've seen a really good softball game today. We have. Change up, missed, one and one. And we want to thank our camera crew crawl around the stadium and our production team led by Mr. Sullivan. Really, everybody doing an outstanding job today, swinging a miss. And there's a lot asked of a lot of people to make the weekend go off without a hitch here with so many events going on. You got a track meet going on, indoor track. You've got a baseball game going on. You got softball. Tomorrow you're going to have all the same things going on, plus you mix in a basketball game. That's a full day. Hop straight up. We'll see if there's a play to be made, and there is not. And these, you know, these people who put on the show, their night, their night doesn't end as soon as the last out is made. That's right. They've got to keep going. You and I don't, but they do. Oh, heck yes. Yeah, I mean. I might go be a spectator of baseball for a little while after this is over. It's not a long walk. No, it's not. <laughs> Turn your head. One, two. Fouled straight back. Taylor fighting. Again, it is amazing. Yes. How many two-strike counts have just continued because hitters refuse to succumb at the plate. Yep. They're just uh, – just battling, battling, battling. Again, the one-two pitch. That one bounced. That was your basic 34-footer right there. <laughs> Clemson up 5-1. Again, this is a little bit of car before the horse, but just to keep it in the back of everybody's mind, the winning run for Clemson is – on deck right now. That ball's lifted to left and caught. It was hit hard, but right at the left fielder. A good the catch inning. there by McCray, and the inning is over. This is how Clemson scored an insurance run. A nice single to left, and the Tigers lead by four as we head to the top of seven. Maryland, one more shot. Down four runs here in the top of the seventh. Clemson has built the lead. They started with defense, Coach, and they've done offense late, but I'm going to tell you what, they set the tone early like this. Yep. Uh, Pego weathered, weathered the storm early in the game in terms of until she got settled in, but she found her rhythm in about the third inning, and then the offense got going. And you see a slap through the right side, and... Gombardo with the home run we saw for, to center field. And now Maryland with three outs to work with is all. Campbell Klein stands in, the eight hitter. And will face Valerie Cagle, who's looking to shut this thing down. The lone run in the first was on a double play ball. Other than that, she has kept Maryland off the scoreboard today. She did damage control in the first inning. Uh, had a rocky second inning. The third inning was okay. You know, they just kept getting better. And, uh, but she's been in pretty good control of herself from the third inning on. Uh, I think we've watched her take a step forward in this ball game. Two balls and a strike to count Klein. Two for two today. Ground ball to second, quick turn, and Pereira gets the out. And now we're going to have a pinch hitter. 
as number 27, Taylor Okada, I believe. Taylor Okada stands in. I believe that's her, yeah. The California influence continues. Sophomore out of Fullerton, California. Okada coming off the bench, replacing McCray, who made the fine play in left a while ago. Yeah, Maryland's got seven or eight players from the West Coast between uh, Arizona and uh, California. And I know this is a new staff. you got to credit the old staff. If you're leaving California to play an outdoor sport in Maryland, then there must be one heck of a draw. Well, I'm sure it's a fine school. Oh, no uh, doubt. I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a desirable place to be, to get an education. A lot of times we lose, lose sight of the fact that these are students. That's right. And uh, we as fans get just caught up in the game, the game, the game. And we forget that these, these young people, even, even as they're on the road, are having to spend time studying and doing things to, to get their education. Well, you spend a little time with a team traveling around. That one's fouled away. And you'll remember quickly that it is almost impossible to manage the time of a student athlete. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Taylor Okada looking for a first hit of the season. She's been on base a time. Walked once. Yeah, I agree with the umpire. <laughs> <laughs> You're up four with an out in the last inning. What can you possibly be talking about? I think that's what he just said <laughs> with very few words. <laughs> yeah. Down to third, off the glove of Taylor. It was foul ball. And they did call it foul. And now the coach is going to come down, and Coach Montgomery's going to further express his displeasure. Boy, that was quite a close play. That's a tough call because she dove. I think the contact was made outside the chalk, but it was also in front of the bag. And so that's tough. I'm not sure if you're Mark Montgomery. I'm not sure that Montgomery could have possibly seen whether it was fair or foul, but it was a very close play. It was. Another look at it. Boy, I'd love to see that in slow motion. And now, if it if it was fair, justice, then all's right. Justice was served. That's I right. Believe. That might have been a fair ball. They fair. sit through the left side. Look at. Let's get another look in slow motion here. That's the single. Oh, that's the single. There we go. We know that one was fair. Yep, that one was very fair. And now a pinch hitter as Kerr will come down. The pinch hitter will be Katie Dustin. Both teams going into their bench a little bit. She's a redshirt freshman from Glenleg, Maryland. It's her second appearance career. How about that? Mr. True freshman season due to an injury. Mrs. Lowe still hitting 69 on the gun. Cagle rearing back and bringing it. And she needs to. She ought to just pump strikes in there. Strike after strike after strike. Okada at first base. And there's a called strike. That evens up the count. Mark Montgomery, we've talked about trying to rebuild this Maryland program that last reached the NCAA tournament in 2012. There's a tapper to second, and Pereira, good flip over to first. Maryland's got Pittsburgh, and then Clemson again, and then Pittsburgh on Sunday morning. There's a look at the last out. 
And you've got right now a situation where if you're Clemson, you're just looking to get to get this get this out and get this thing over with. Because you've got a doubleheader, you got a pair of games tomorrow. You don't want to use your bullpen. You don't want to have to prolong this. You could tell right there, even as Taylor throwing the ball back to Cagle, Sun becoming a factor. If you're on the left side of the field looking out toward the right as it sets here. Another foul ball. Yeah. And there's a look at the busy, busy calendar. Baseball already in action today. Softball, a couple of games in there, a couple of basketball games. And then, of course, we'll have coverage on ACC Network Extra, 1230 tomorrow afternoon. Just missed the outside corner, and Hyatt wanted that call quite badly. That was a pretty good pitch right there. Let's see. Maybe a little yeah. bit low. It hit the spot, but it, but it was out, out. It was off the plate. Change up, strike three, swinging, and that will do it. Clemson wins this afternoon, five to one, to start the Big Ten ACC Challenge on a positive note and draw back to four and four on the season. A great effort, really in all phases, Coach. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Maryland challenged them, put them on the ropes early in the ball game. They weathered the storm, faced adversity, and then they got things going and uh, took control of this game the second half. Outstanding game from the pitcher, Cagle, with a complete game, seven innings, fantastic performance by her in the circle. She really set the tone for this game. I know she hits too, but it was her pitching that really got things going for the Tigers and the defense behind her. It was her improving each inning with her pitching. Uh, we saw her, I think, take a huge step forward today. No doubt about that. It was a great day, great crowd here in Clemson, beautiful sky, and a 5-1 win for the Tigers. Over the Maryland Terrapins, they'll be back in action tomorrow afternoon, but a few hours to enjoy this one. For my broadcast partner, Scott Whitlock, for our crack crew here at Clemson, I'm William Quagamus saying so long from Clemson Softball Stadium. Have a good rest of your evening. <laughs>